You see, in ICSI, we have over the next 60 to 90 days, four green fields coming online. Yeah, so that's taking up a lot of our time, a lot of my time. Four greenfield projects, more or less coming on stream at the same, you know, within the same couple of months. These are in Melbourne, in uh, our third terminal in uh, Basra, in Iraq, in Buenaventura, in Colombia, and in Matadi, Congo. These four terminals will, will be the drivers of growth over the next five years. Yeah, like our Mexico terminal, and you know, we, two years ago we had three startups which are providing very strong growth now. So we look at these four new terminals now to be the engine, the spark plug for more growth. The last time we sat down with you, you were very bearish on world yeah. trade. And then I like still am. Well, you have to look at where the growth is. There are, we have some, some areas that are growing strongly. Like last year, it was Pakistan and Honduras which drove a lot of the growth. Mexico, those three. Those three are still driving growth. The proof is in the numbers. And then the, how the share price reacts is the attitude of, uh, of investors. Well, our capex is, is tapering off dramatically. And once they're completed, uh, it's really going to be maintenance capex. That will, that will drop off precipitously. That will really get spent because that's completion mm. capex. Now, it may spill into up to March or April next year, but that number is a pretty hard number. And then it falls off because we have, we have huge construction projects. Uh, uh, Colombia was 600 million, almost. Melbourne was almost half a billion, almost five, 400 something. You know, those fall off. And we don't have those type of terminals in the pipeline now no. for construction, for now. Or for next year or the year after, because these things are done several years in advance. Well, but I suppose since you have, you're looking at, a, uh, uh, at years when you won't have spend as much, I'm pretty sure you're going around trying to find new businesses. We're always doing that. We're doing that 24 hours a day. It's just, it's just kind of a dry spell in the global privatization. You know, there is expansion projects in existing terminals that reach capacity. Mexico, we have capex to expand. Mm -hmm. Ecuador, we need capex to expand. So it's, those, it's that type of capex. But it's not as big as the green fields. The only green field in the horizon right now could be a terminal in Nigeria. But nothing is firmed up on time frames there. No? Our green fields over the last five years have totaled of roughly about 1.8 billion. And Honduras, we're about to expand the terminal there on a 280 million, 300 million forest. So that's the type of capex I was saying we'll be spending the next five years. More on existing terminals, expanding them. We're more focused in Latin America and Africa and the Middle East. And right now, there's really nothing to focus on Asia. Because the open markets in Asia, for example, uh, Malaysia, for example, is not an open market. So it's very difficult to go in. Vietnam is too open. There's too, ter too many terminals, especially in the south, where there's massive overcapacity and you can't make any money. Uh, so you have to, you know, where are you going to go in Asia? Indonesia has some opportunities, so that's one place. Myanmar, Myanmar once they do the, the legislation needed to allow foreigners doing infrastructure and things, it will be very interesting as well. So. But as far as things live, ongoing right now, it's not, not much happening. We were in India and we're no longer there. Yeah. India's very difficult environment, so we're not really looking at anything there now. Iran is where, where some privatizations are coming up soon. That's probably the most active area now. In the past week, uh, the, the, there are already people expressing concern that the uh, political developments or the political noise they are concerned that it might already spill over to unpredictability in the economic and business environment. Do you think th there is a risk of that happening? I mean, these are the people who expected that the president wasn't going to do what he said he was going to do. In the they're probably surprised that a politician is actually doing what he said he would do in the campaign. Change is good, <laughs> and if you can't adapt to change, I mean, then something is wrong with you. No? So you got to deal with whatever the situation is, instead of complaining and <laughs> and moaning. I mean, you got to adapt and, and be very flexible. Adjustments are done day to day. Yeah. And uh, you have to expect the unexpected no matter what. As the president pushes uh, building relations with uh, traditionally non-allied countries, uh, do you think uh, uh, this will have an impact on our relations with the U.S., and will that have an impact on the economy and the bu and business? There's no reason why you cannot have good relations with both. I mean, China and the U.S. are not at war. 
there's a there's de territorial dispute. But they are each other's largest trading partner. Don't, don't forget that. Philippines is a small country. We need to have good relations with both. I'm sure you sit down with a lot of investors and you've met some of them already. W what concerns do they express about the Philippines? Well, they're nervous because, you know, uh, investors don't like, they don't like uh, any kind of uh, uncertainty. The economy has certain yeah, momentum. Right. That just doesn't stop overnight unless there's uh, some kind of severe disruption, seismic uh, sort of thing. No? Mm -hmm. I don't see that right now, yeah. Some people are in their minds, maybe. Yeah. My job, my business, I have to, I ha I'm always have to be worried. In fact, you have to be borderline paranoid. You know, when things are going too well, that, then I really get worried. If there's nothing to worry about, then I invent it. 